Hey, welcome back guys. Let's solve a new lead code problem. Today's problem is to create a binary tree from description. So you are given a 2D and integer array description where the description of i is represented via a triplet. So the first element is the parent i, child and an information is left or not, indicating that the parent of i is the parent of this child and uh, in a binary tree and here it mentioned that the values are unique and this is important and we will see why in few moments so here we have this information about is left so if is left is equals one then the child is the left child of the parent otherwise the child is the right child of the parent so what we need to do is to construct the binary tree described by the description and return the root of the binary tree so here it says that all the test cases will be generated such as the binary tree is valid. So we don't need to worry about that. All right, so now let's go through the first example and this will give us the intuition and the solution that we need to implement. All right, so here, as you can see, this is the binary tree that we need to construct. And here we have the description. So in the description we have, first we have this first node, which is 20. So 20 will be the parent of the node with the value 15. So as we can see here, we have 20 and then we have the value 15 and we have this one is 1 so this the child will be on the left of the parent with the value 20 then we move on we have a ne next one or a second one and it will be the, the right child of the parent node with the value 20 and so and so forth then we have 50 so 50 is in here so we create the node with the value 50 and then we have already the child so the child we need to check if we whether created or constructed this child before if it's the case we need we don't need to recreate it again otherwise we create it so here we check that we already constructed or created a child or a node with the value 20 so we can just link it in here to the left since we have one right here then we move on we have again 20 so to, uh, 50 sorry we have again a parent with the value 50 we check or we check that we already have a node with the value 50 so the 50 already exists so we don't need to recreate it again so then we have the child with value 80 we first check if we have 80 or not if we if yes we just get it and link it based on this information otherwise we create it so in our case 80 doesn't exist so we create 80 and then we link it with the parent which is 50 then we move on we have the next one which is 80 so 80 we already have it and then it has a child of value 19 we check if we have 19 if yes or not so if yes we just get it and link it otherwise otherwise we just create it and link it of course so here we create 19 and then we link it so how can we reach that so here we already mentioned that we create a node a parent and a child and then when we move to the next one we need to check if the parent or the child already exists and based on this information we want to construct the links whether to the left or to the right and for these checks we need to do it in an efficient way so like we need or we want something or some kind of data structure that will help us or like that will allow us to fetch an information in a constant time so for that we need or like we can use any type of hashes so like we can use a hash table hash map set and so and so forth because the access time of this hash uh, data structures is a big o of one so it's a constant time so when we want to look up for something all we need to do is to try to fetch it with the key or with the value and the access time will be o of one so in this in this case we can solve this problem in a big o of n time complexity so now let's work through a dry run or through an example how we can implement this so we mentioned before that we can use a hash map so but how or what we will store inside this hash map so here since we know from the problem announcement that we have or like the values of the binary tree are unique so we can use a hash map so we can use a hash map and this hash map it will have a value of the value itself so here we will have like an integer which is the value itself and then the node that we already created so here we will have our tree node as a value 
And then each time we construct an element or a node, we check if we have it already in the map or not. So also again, the time complexity for accessing an element in a hash map is a big O of one. So let's go through the example. So first I will have, as I mentioned, I will create my hash map. So here I will have a hash map. It, it will contain like two elements, like the key. So the key will be the value here, like a like specific value of the node. And then we will have the tree node itself as, as a value. So now let's go through this example one by one. First, we have the first element. So we want to create a node, a parent node of the value 20, and it has a child of value 15, and the child should be linked to the left. The first thing we want to check, so we will have the parent, right? And in this case, or like the first example, the parent will have a value 20, and we will have a child, and the child will have a value 15. So first I check if I already have this parent in my map. So the first, like the first run, we don't. Same for the child. So we don't have anything right here. So we don't have neither the parent or the child. So what we need to do, so I will create a node. So first I will create a node with the value 20. And then I have, a, I need to create a node with the value 15. And since I know that I have one right here, so this child should go to the left. So I will draw it in here and link it to the left. Then we move to the next one. And of course, in our map, we need to store 20 as the ID and the node itself. It's the same thing for the, for the value 15 and also the node itself. All right, so let's, let's move to the next one. So the next one, we have the parent having the value 20 and we have the child having the value, the value 17. So I will just, I hope it's still readable. So here we have 17. So the first thing we check, do we have already a node with the value 20? Yes, we do. And then we check for the child, do we have a value with an, uh, a node or we, do we have something in our map with the value 17? So no, we don't have. If we don't have, so then we need to only to create the child. And then the child, we know this value is zero. So we need to link the child to the right side of the existing node. All right. So then we move to the next one. We have 50. So do we have 50 in the array or in the map? Nope. So we create a node 50. And then 50, it has the a child with the value 20. Do we have something with the value 20? Yes. So we store it in here. So I just forgot to store the 17 and the 17 in here. All right. So now what we need to do, we need to store the new value. So it will be 50 and the node 50 as well. So the node 50 will has or like will be linked into uh, to this node and this one of course is link linked here and this one is linked here so i don't want to mess the the drawing but you can see it from the construction of this one right here so then we move to this to this element right here so we have 50 so we check do we have 50 in the map yes so we get it and then we check the child so do we have a child with the value 80 nope so we need to create a new node with the value 80 and then we know from this information that the 80 should go to the right. So we link it to the right of the node or of the parent or of the node that we just created. Then we move to the final one. So, so in the same way, so here let me store 80 and here I will have a node with the value 80. So in the same way, now do we have 80 already in the map? Yes, so we get it. And then do we have a child with a value 19? Nope, so we create 19 and 19 should go to the left. All right, so now, so far, everything is fine and everything seems to be quite easy. But like when it comes to the code, how can we detect or how can we know that this node is the parent of my tree or is the root of my tree that I just constructed? So constructing the tree as mentioned or as, as you saw, it's quite simple. But how can we know that we have or like that this is the root node? So one simple way is to create an array list. So before going to the array list, let me explain to you what, how, how can we detect that? So as you can see here, so like w when we see it from the tree level, so here we have this 50, it has two children and zero parents. So here, let me just draw it this way. 
So here we have two children and zero parents. So this one, it has one parent and two children. The same for like for this one. So here it has one parent and zero children. Same for this one. And here it has one parent and one child. All right. So as you can see here, like the, the node or the root of my tree is the node that has zero parents that has no parent for it. So in this case, what we can do, so we can do or like we can create an array for children. And here for each element that we construct, we need to count the number of children. All right. So here every time or each time we construct a node and link it, we need to increase the number of children. And then finally, the element that has children equals zero is the parent of my tree node. And all I need to do is to get it from here. So for example, here we will end up with the parent or with the node or the value with, uh, with the value 50 having zero children. All right. And then all we need to do is to go to our map and get the element uh, or like the value of the map having the key equals 50. And since here we are storing the tree node itself, so all I need to do is to return this value. So I hope the explanation was uh, clear. Now let's move on to the code and let me explain to you how I implemented the solution for this problem. So here, as we mentioned, first we create a map. So the map, it will have a value or a key integer and the value tree node. And then I created also an array of type int having the, uh, the length of 10 to the power of four, which is the constraint uh, that we have already in the problem, plus one since the nodes, they can start from, from one. All right. So then we loop over the, the descriptions that we have, and then we get the parent and we get the child. So how we get the parent. So here we check in our map if we have already something with the key description zero. So we know that the description zero is the parent. If we don't, we return like we create uh, dynamically or directly we create a new tree node. So this is why we are using get or default. So if we have already something or if we have a node with this value, we return it. Otherwise we create a new node, the same thing for the child. And then we just check whether we need to link our node to the left or to the right of the parent. So here we check the description of two, which is the third element. So if the value is one, so we link it to the left, otherwise we link it to the right. Then we need to update our map. So we need to insert the parent and we need to insert the child as well. So because we will need them later on. And then of course we need to update or like we need to increase the count of the number of children of each element. So here we need to increment only the number of elements of the child. So we know the child is stored in the second uh, element of our triplet array. So it will be description of one. Then all we need to do is to loop over the list of children. And here, first we check if my map contains already the key, which is like starting from zero to 10 to the power of four plus one. And then we need to check that the children of I is zero. So for example, like you might wondering, maybe like we can return the value or like a node with the value one, but here we are checking if this or if this value already exists in the map or not, if the case, so we just return the map.get and that key. Otherwise we just return null. So this is the solution for today's problem. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like this video, go ahead and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much and see you in the next one.